Seems like it's about that time to assemble some Z-axis rails. So, we're using the exact same carriage setup that we used for the X-axis, which makes the design and the build part a lot easier because the design's done and I've already built a bunch of them, so I already know how to make them. And then the actual rail setup is just two pieces that we flipped around and we sandwiched together with our trusty screws. There's a bunch of them hanging out right there, which doesn't bother me too much. It might trim them, I might not. We'll figure that out. It's real simple, should go together pretty smoothly. We're getting close. This is gonna be awesome. Same deal as on the X-axis. You definitely wanna be mindful of where you put the screws so they do not impede any of the bearing movement because the last thing you want is a super chunky axis. I mean, the bearing being tight is one thing, but having them actually physically run into divots or screws themselves, is really gonna screw up the motion. You're not gonna like it one bit, so just go ahead and avoid it. So I'm temping in the first rail for the Z axis. And as much as I would love to just go ahead and use these flathead screws we've been using this whole time, if I tried to do that on all four of them or all six of them, however many I end up with, this position would be locked in place permanently. And I want to leave myself an out for adjustment. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a pan head. So I'm going to tap it still, but I'm going to overbore this hole slightly, just the one inside of the rail. And so if I need to make adjustments, I'm going to be able to do that and just tighten the screw back down and we'll be able to make the adjustments. Should be pretty good. The Z axis carriages are pretty much exactly like the Y axis. We got a carriage on each side and we attach the two of them with the closeout panel. You can get a little bit better of a view right there. And I kept everything nice and tight, trying to hold our tolerance as well. Seems to be working out pretty good, but we will find out when it's actually finalized and running. Gotta try to find a home for this gargantuan router. It's about 12 inches in circumference. And of course, the biggest pipe I have is about six inches in circumference, so gonna be a little bit to figure out here. I was trying to do this entire project without a welder. This particular circumstance, that's not very realistic. So I have to make the router clamp, so I took that pipe that I was showing you guys. I cut it down hamburger and hot dog style. I only cut one side of it hot dog style. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten them out, weld them together, and then I'm gonna be able to bend them around this whole thing. Then I'm going to weld eyelets onto one end, and that way we're able to clamp it together, and it should grab the crap out of that router, and then we can figure out the rest. Even though most of the machine is belt driven, my Z axis, I decided to go with an all thread setup just because I want it to be really accurate and it's moving a lot of weight, so I want it to have plenty of torque. So it's a real simple setup. We got the rod, we have a nut, and then when you turn it, as long as the nut doesn't spin, it's going to actually move up and down. And so you just attach the actual carriage of the Z axis to the nut, good to go. You just want to make sure that you have your two rails here and your motor in line. You want to make sure that the spacing top and bottom is the same so the rod isn't crooked and that way it's going to move the actual carriage real nicely along those two rails. One thing you have to do, so these are our brackets here, one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that this bearing can't move around and so what we do is we take a large area washer and we drill a hole the same size as the bearing in the washer and then in the bracket we have a hole that's just big enough so the center portion of the bearing can move unobstructed. When you put this whole setup together, I just tack welded the large area washer to the bracket. The bearing fits down inside of it. And then we use jam nuts to squeeze up against the bearings in the brackets. That setup is not going anywhere. And if you do it properly, the Z axis should move just fine.
extremely happy with the machine so far. There's something really important that I learned though, since this machine is about twice as powerful and much, much faster. If you don't use machine tabs, you get pieces uh, something like this that end up catching on your bit and then get flung across the garage, which is pretty scary if you're not expecting it. And so in uh, whatever AutoCAD software you use, you use machine tabs so the piece doesn't actually break away until you break it away. And then it doesn't get flung across the shop. Works pretty good. My first two attempts were about what I was expecting. They're pretty small, so the ears kept falling off of these things, or any really sharp corners kept getting knocked off. So the bigger one ended up quite a bit better, and the whole reason behind that is the particular bit that I'm using is not super small, so when it's trying to go into these small areas, it's just wreaking havoc in there. So the first thing that you would want to do is use a smaller bit. The problem is these aren't a long enough profile to penetrate through the entire depth of the wood without hitting the shank. And so that wasn't really an option. So it's one of those compromises that you have to make. In an ideal world, I would have maybe a planer so I could plane this down or just thinner wood, but I do not have a planer right now. So we're kind of stuck with what we got. But overall, it isn't terrible, but there is a lot of room for improvement, which we will see. As of right now, there's a ton more work before I can finally say that this thing is actually done. First and foremost, I actually bought a three horsepower spindle with a variable frequency drive. So that's going to make this thing a much more capable machine. So I need to install that. And then there's tons of little finish and trim things and a couple things that I want to modify to make it a little bit better. But right now it's functional. I can get to know the quirks of the belt drive and I can get to understand this machine a little bit better and maybe start cutting some metal, which is at the end of the day, my primary goal with this machine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.